Hello everybody, my name is Kingsticks and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to play AP Shaco jungle like a pro. No, I am not trolling. AP Shaco is actually extremely powerful. The most recent changes in patch 9.20 made him a monster. It made his E do magic damage, it made his boxes do area of effect damage, and it made his ultimate's boxes activate instantly upon his clone dying, so your fear and your box damage on your ultimate is much more consistent now. Another massive buff for AP Shaco. His Q got a huge buff making it start out at two and a half seconds at level one which allows Shaco to only put one point in his Q early on for ganking and then just stacking points in his E and in his W making him an AP machine. And finally Shaco's E does bonus damage when used from behind similar to his backstab auto attacks on his passive. The function you'll be performing as AP Shaco is a secondary assassin. You'll be focusing targets your team is focusing, and you'll be putting out a relatively high amount of CC if you're using your boxes and ultimate effectively. If you do manage to get turbo fed, you'll pretty much be able to one shot people as well, and you'll be extremely slippery. Let's take a quick look at the runes to take on Shaco before we jump into the gameplay. You have a few different options for your runes on Shaco, but the best one by far, especially for AP Shaco, is going for Dark Harvest. Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter. You could go for Relentless Hunter instead, it's a good option, but I prefer Ravenous for the healthier clears. In fights, it kind of keeps you healthier as well, especially off of your E damage and ultimate explosions. And then for your secondary page, your best option is going for free boots. You're gonna be getting off lots of cheeky ganks pre six and before the 10 minute mark, so you'll be getting your boots really fast. And then you're gonna be taking Cosmic Insight. For your three rune stats, you're gonna be taking double adaptive force and two armor. This is your ideal AP Shaco setup. Shaco's initial clear is very important because you need to be setting up your boxes. This means you need to leave base on time. That way you can lay your boxes on time. You don't wanna lay your boxes any later than the 30 second mark since they do last for a full minute. They'll last just long enough to be there for the camps right when they spawn in. If you end up laying them too late, you won't get down as many. And if you lay them before the 30 second mark, your first box will expire before the camp spawns in. You don't even need a leash for this clear and you'll get level three before any laner on the map is even level two, which sets you up for an extremely powerful gank. You're gonna wanna get three boxes down right on top of Raptor camp and then lay a fourth box in between Raptor Camp and Red Buff. These boxes by themselves will be able to completely solo the Raptors, which will allow you to hit level two while taking Red Buff, and that way you don't have to mess with the Raptor Camp at all, and you can go straight into Golems. It's very important that you start with Refillable Potion and Hunter's Talisman. If you do Hunter's Machete, this will not work, and you will run out of mana. Every single one of your auto attacks and E does more damage to the enemies when you hit them from behind, so try to get in the habit of auto attacking and moving every single time. That way, every single auto attack you do, you'll get extra damage on. As you can see here, the Raptor Camp dies completely completely due to my boxes. I hit level two by taking red buff, so now I have more stats. And you need to be taking Q at level two, that way you can get to your golems faster. If I would've taken my E at level two, yes, I could've done my red buff a little bit faster, but getting to my golems would've taken longer to the point to where it wouldn't have quite been worth it. As you approach the wall, immediately throw your box over it and then Q over, hit the golem in the back. It will hit you one time, but as it's going in for a second hit, your box will fear it and you'll be tearing it up. Make sure to be hitting the golems in the back every single time if you can for the extra damage. Lay your next box when it comes off of cooldown and it will shred up the medium and small golems. Once your box hits the small ones just once, it'll kill them with the hunter talisman burn. And if there are any medium golems, as long as they are a quarter health, it will kill them and their small spawns with how long that the box lasts. So with this clear route, you will be hitting level three with no leash around the two minute 20 second mark while every single laner should still be level one. If you do get a leash on your red buff, it will go faster and you'll save roughly 10 seconds. It's not completely necessary and something to keep in mind is if you do get a leash, the enemies will know since your laners got to lane later and since they probably use mana as well. So if you wanna play it safe, don't get the leash. After you finish your golems, you have the option of ganking the closest enemy laner, or you can simply recall, get a dark sill, get a pink ward, and clear the rest of your jungle and work yourself into a gank. 
Since this route pulls you away from the rest of your jungle, I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're not going to gank right after golems or if you can't invade the enemy's jungle because whenever you do this route it does leave your full blue side exposed so it's important that you go in for a gank or invade the enemy jungle if you do neither this route will just end up costing you a lot of gold experience and time in this game i made the mistake of only putting three boxes on the raptors instead of placing the fourth in between red buff and the raptors as my box comes back up i take too long to get it down as you see here and the raptors end up resetting don't make this mistake don't be greedy get three boxes on the raptors lay the fourth one in between raptors and red and take red buff that way this doesn't end up happening to you i still end up going for my golems after i mess up the starting clear because i have a pike bot lane with Jin. pike has a lot of cc and the enemy team has a nautilus so they're going to be playing really aggressive i didn't want to go top lane and try to gank a garen he's too tanky and nard really doesn't have that much cc Overall, that blunder cost us roughly 15 seconds. It is a setback, but not the end of the world. Watch how I walk away and let my box pretty much finish off the whole camp. You can leave one medium golem and one small golem and still get level 3, and it's okay to leave it at that point. In your ganks on Shaco, you want to focus on your lanes that have a lot of damage and a lot of CC, and preferably enemies who don't have too much mobility. That way you can land really easy boxes. If they have a lot of mobility, they'll consistently dodge or move past your box before it has a chance to activate. I personally like ganking bot lane quite often, since more often than not support champions have a lot of CC plus since we are taking dark harvest it'll be giving us a chance to get potentially two dark harvest stacks and of course if your ganks are working you should be returning to the same lanes to get more easy kills that way you're not wasting your time on bad ganks and you can keep getting more dark harvest stacks nautilus clearly just warded so i don't want to run down through that way so i'm gonna abuse my q to the max over the wall just make sure to place your cursor over the wall where you want to go over. I'm not going to pick the fattest spot. I'm going to pick one of the fatter spots. That way I can cover more distance. As long as your queue goes more than halfway over that wall section, it'll put you on the other side. Ideally, you want to lay your box down while you're still invisible so the enemies have less time to react to your gank. In this case, I lay my W right as I'm coming out of invisibility since the enemies happen to pull back. Even though Nautilus does walk away negating my box, he does have to take a longer path to avoid its fear. So even though I didn't actually get the fear off on either one of them, it ended up giving us the time that we needed to finish off Nautilus. Shaco has a lot of gank options with walls. and top lane, for example, you can come up behind pretty much any part of the wall as long as it's not too thick. Here I come from inside of Shen's jungle. Q over the wall with still only a level 1 Q. E him from behind with the extra damage and I laid down my W at that time as well. If my Q would have lasted longer, if I had more points in it, I would have been able to get my W down while I was still invisible, but it's really not a big deal since I am behind him. I'm cutting off his pathing and the box is behind him as well. So if he tries to run, he'll get feared. And if he takes a longer path to try to run around it, we'll just kill him anyways. It's really important to pay attention to the map on Shaco Jungle in particular. Whenever an enemy gets low, it's a really easy opportunity. Even if they are underneath their own turret, they're not safe. Just queue over the wall, throw out your E. You can even use your blue smite or ignite for a little extra damage. While I was ganking, we saw Ivern taking my blue and he'd only taken his reds. Right now, I want to counteract his blue. I'm pulling it away from the wall so he can't queue to it. And I'm also loading down boxes to protect myself from Nautilus roaming or Ivern just showing up in general. To have survived the Syndra Roam, I needed to be standing right on top of the wall, so right when she went to stun me, I could have jumped over to safety and ran away towards my mid laner and to my mid lane turret. Instead, I wasn't near the wall, so I couldn't jump over, so I ate all of her damage and she ignited me. I could have also tried queuing in the opposite direction that I was running. In this case, since Syndra got off her ignite on me, I don't think it would have worked since ignite will shimmer Shaco while he's invisible. Dying early on Shaco jungle is really, really bad since he's an early game champion. Losing your momentum will really set you far behind. I come in to get Garen. The bush was clearly warded. He started running even before I started the gang. Even with my smite, I can't land my box on him since he was running so i have to abandon the gang and then i move him to ivern's jungle and take his golems whenever you're in a dangerous situation particularly when counter jungling make sure you hold on to your q that way if the enemies do pinch you you'll have an easy way to escape ivern jungle rarely takes his golems especially on the first clear so i assume they would be up i recall get some ap and now i can start working on my golems and building towards my level six at level six shaco ganks are really scary because he has so much damage off his ult plus he can 
can solo dragons super easily once he's level six. Like we talked about, you can solo dragons really easily. Whenever you are taking the dragon, you want your clone to tank it while you hit the dragon in the back for maximum damage. Your clone lasts so long and has plenty of HP to tank it without dying, so you won't really be missing out on any damage from the clone dying early. This concept works with any objective that you can auto attack, whether it be Baron and turrets, using your clone will help you take it a lot faster. While taking my golems, we see Sintra going in for a roam, I ping it, Malphite has his ult, he goes in, I go in, I lay down box on her escape route, hit her with my E, I boost my Ivern, and now I want to just keep nailing with auto attacks and hit him with my E slow. Guarantee P bot and my AD carries dead, so we just have to back off. That was a really good trade to take, I am weary of Ivern trying to take my red from me, He's been fairly aggressive so far, so I lay down my box right where he would probably queue over the wall if he did come for me. And then sure enough, here he is. I'm going to jump the wall, auto attack him before I E because I want to get off extra damage and my E is range. My autos are not. His only escape route is to run through me, so I'll get off a lot of free autos and he'll most likely run through my next box as well because he doesn't want to run through my pike. So as he's running, I stay on top of him and I also ignite him, picking up the kill. As you can see, a full health Ivern just got killed by an AP Shaco jungle at level 5. If you take full advantage of your boxes in this way, you have so much damage potential and you're really sticky. Especially if the enemy is running away from you with extra damage you get from your passive and the extra damage your passive gives you on your E from behind as well is really big. We see Ivern top lane. I would go mid and gank even though I'm low on HP, but Malphite's ult is down so we really don't have any kill potential. If his ult was up, all we would need is my E and my Dark Harvest proc for an easy kill. Ivern is going for Scuttle and he's still level 5 so I have a big ult advantage here. I'm going to let Malphite lead the way. Keep a close eye on Syndra here. She's going to be foolish and leave lane to try to rotate. This is really bad call on her part because if Malphite is up we can easily one shot her. I bait out her stun. I move back onto her auto attack then E. Then I ultimate and we blow her apart. Ivern didn't even want to fight that because he wasn't level 6 and that was a fight they should have avoided altogether since me and Malphite are both level 6 plus and Ivern was level 5 that whole time. You just can't match two ultimates with only one ultimate. It's just not realistic. Look for opportunities to use your ultimate clone after the fight is over. Especially if you win it, you can push into the enemy's jungle and look to take some of their stuff. My ignite's down right now, my ult's down, and so is my blue smite, so I don't really want to be looking for a gank. Plus, I have a ton of gold, so I don't want to be ganking while I can back and get my full jungle item, which is a huge power spike. The only reason why I stayed is I wanted to finish clearing this side of my jungle out. That way it can all spawn in at once while I'm ganking or clearing the other side of my jungle jungle or going for dragon. I have my full jungle item in Sork Shoes now. I did get the free boots which allowed me to hit this power spike a lot faster. As I'm taking golems, I see Syndra is chasing my team so I leave golems early because I want to be there for my team. If you can tell a fight's breaking out, it's better to leave the camp than it is to stay there. Here I'm waiting for Malphite to ult, soften up the fight. I drop my W and my E over the wall on top of the Syndra before I Q over and then auto attack her. This way she wasn't quite sure where I was coming from and I got a massive surprise factor on her. I then ultimate, task my clone to her and we kill her super super fast. Another advantage that I gained from using my W and my E over the wall before I Q'd is if Syndra were to start attacking me over the wall, I could have dodged her attacks by using my Q over the wall at that point so it was a win-win all the way around. Ivern gets caught out a bit at the end of the fight. I stay on top of him with my E and setting up a Jin Snare. We don't quite pick up the kill since Ivern runs away, but we put a lot of pressure on him and got his flash. After you soften the enemies up, get a kill or two, it lets you chase people down for free on AP Shaco. With your overpowered Q and E, you can put out a ton of damage. And if targets are low on health, you can clean them up really easily with your Dark Harvest E burst. It's not always the best idea to W and E over the wall first. Sometimes it's best to get yourself over it, particularly when you don't have your team to back you up. In this case, Pike's getting chased. I see the Nautilus and Syndra. I want to get over the wall first. I drop my W behind her, so she's not really sure where I'm at at this point. I'd auto attack her, E her from behind, get off even more damage off of my passive that way, and then I begin to run. If she'd walked into my box, I would have killed her, and since she didn't walk into it, I do have to back up, but I 
can use it as a way to zone her off me so she can't chase into me, otherwise she'll die. Whenever the enemies are full HP, or if you don't have someone in the front line, you're oftentimes going to be hitting them with your E and then putting a box down on top of yourself. This is a really great way to self pill for yourself. Unless they have super long range, they won't be able to attack you since your box will be zoning them off of you. This will allow you to get out more damage, stay in the fight longer, and then eventually pick up a kill on a lower HP target. If Tristana didn't show up, I would have queued back over the raptor wall and finished off the Syndra. Luckily, she walks back into me, so I just queue over the mid lane wall and E her to finish her off. Really greedy positioning by Syndra's part. I believe she didn't recognize that Tristana was pushing me off there, so she thought I was already jumping over the raptor wall and was trying to juke me out. In the end, she just really juked herself. Your next big power spike on Shaco is hitting your spell binder after your jungle item. It's going to let you set up a lot more plays, have way better chase down, and in in terms of value, it's a very cheap full AP jungle item for how much AP it gives at 120. Shaco is the chase down master who knows is trying to get away. I peg him with an E. As he's trying to escape, I keep my auto attacks on him for the damage. Tristan is trying to finish off the pike, foolishly jumps past me, eats loads of damage. I use my spell binder to stay on top of her and give me a last bit of damage as I finish her off. At this point I ult since Nautilus is behind me I don't want to get hooked and I use my clone to hit Ivern and then I also use it to block the Nautilus hook. I can't really stay on top of Ivern now so I switch over to the Nautilus, me and the clone whittle him down. Sindra's trying to flank me right now so my positioning is limited. I want to clone dive Ivern to do massive damage to him. He backs up really quickly though and my clone's already so low on health it can't take more than one turret shot. As my my clone's chasing him, I make sure to get down an E onto the Ivern to slow him to let my clone get closer. In this very similar play, you'll see how it should work if your clone has a little bit more HP to chase underneath a turret. As my clone is chasing, I get down an E which slows her just enough for my clone to get closer so as he dies and explodes, Akali takes full damage and the boxes as well activate immediately, finishing her off. I'm going to throw a box down behind me, that way Sintra can't finish collapsing. Jin holds Ivern still with his ultimate, I walk forward Eam for the finishing blow. Besides being really good at chasing down, if you can pull off a bait or a semi bait and pull the enemies into multiple boxes, you can do a lot of damage. Even though Ivern doesn't fall for it, he ends up leading his daisy into a death trap. Thinking he's out of danger because my boxes are down, he gets himself picked off by a Malphite ult and I finish him off with a really good KS. This is where Shaco really excels in these drawn out team fights or in these pick positions. Being able to constantly slow people with your E, get off fears and stay on top of them with your Qs, you can really give your team a lot of value. Whenever we are sieging the enemy's base, I like to lay my boxes over the wall entrances. That way whenever the enemies try to run out to defend it, they'll get slammed with the box and then I can easily follow up with an E. And if I feel like I can finish them off, I can also Q over the wall and auto them as well. If you're really deep in the enemy's base taking their turret it's a smart idea to lay a box behind you on your escape route so if the enemies try to cut you off they're in for a nasty surprise in team fights as the enemies push back rely on the boxes that you've already laid for easy picks i just scraped about half of ivern's hp with my w and e the cc also allowed us to set up a counter engage with the malphite ult and a gin snare and lets us pick off multiple of the enemies now that we have a man advantage i'm free to just stand in the front line throw out constant ease and get down some really useful front boxes stopping the enemies from being able to push forward at all without taking a lot of damage. Three of the enemies are disjointed and Garen is low. I want to try to pick him off. I do end up missing my E on him and it hits Nautilus instead. That's okay. I also use my Spellbinder to boost my E damage. I lay down a box right on top of the Nautilus and Garen and ultimate right as the Cinder Stun hits me to help me avoid her other spells. If I would have used my Protobelt here or Ignite, we would have picked up the kill on Nautilus for sure. I really wasn't expecting that flash. Q on top of her, Hextech Protobel, auto attack, and E. I'm gonna wait to close the distance on her with my Q over the wall instead of just chasing her with no HP. I toss down the E, and now I am in a really good spot to kill Nautilus, but Tristana shows up. She doesn't quite pinch me off. At this point, the enemies can't really chase me because I throw down a box, it zones them. If Nautilus went to auto that box, he would have actually gotten feared and taken a lot of damage. Two of the enemies are picked right now so we can chase. I'm going to throw out constant ease every time they're up. It's really nice slow to get down for your team even if you can't close in and get the kill. My ultimate's up. I barely mistime it. If I would have done it a little bit sooner I could have completely dodged the Singer damage and the Singer CC and I definitely would have lived. Luckily though with the abilities the enemies used to kill me it allowed my team to clean them up for free.
And that is how you play Shaco Jungle like a pro in just 19 minutes. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm a lot. I do read every single one of them. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Hush.